Many retaining walls are cantilever type, but it's also common to find in practice retaining walls that are restrained at the top, laterally supported, such as in the case of a basement wall where uh, the elevated slabs are supporting the retaining wall. But how do you design a retaining wall that is laterally supported at the top or even if it's supported at several places? How do you size the wall? How do you determine the backfill soil lateral pressures and how do you design the wall? This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to discuss how to design top restrained retaining walls. Let's get started. A typical retaining wall has four elements. The stem, which can be concrete or can be masonry or a combination of both and the footing. The toe is a portion of the footing at the front of the wall and the heel is a portion of the footing in the backfield. The fourth element is the shear key. Normally the walls are restrained only at the top, but it's also common to find in practice two-story walls with an additional intermediate lateral support. The stem can be only concrete and can be tapered or just prismatic, the same dimension at the top and the bottom. can be masonry, just block walls all the, all the way up can be a combination of both, concrete at the bottom and masonry at the top, or it can be masonry only, but with two different sections, thicker at the bottom and narrower at the top. The typical loads in a retaining wall are just the backfill, can be sloped or can be flat, the water table, uniform vertical surcharge, either dead or live, or a strip pressure al along the wall. The wall can have a concentrated load at the top, and the wall can be exposed also to wind, particularly the portion of the wall above the backfill. This shows the lateral soil pressures and the different states. In the vertical axis we are showing the shear, in the horizontal axis we are showing the normal stresses, either vertical or horizontal. When we apply a vertical pressure, as in the case of a retaining wall, the corresponding lateral pressure is equal to the vertical pressure times a coefficient. The coefficient can be the active coefficient, which corresponds to this circle, or passive coefficient, which corresponds to this larger circle over here. The active pressure is developed when the mass of soil pushes against the wall and the wall moves. Then the active shear strength is developed. When the wall pushes against the soil, the passive shear strength is developed. In the case of cantilever retaining walls, it's common practice to use the active pressure against the wall because the wall moves. But in the case of a restrained retaining wall, the wall cannot move, so the active shear strength cannot be developed. In this case, it's better to use the addressed state pressure. The passive pressure can, can be used at the front of the wall when the wall pushes against the soil. So one important difference in the design of retaining walls is that when it's cantilever, we can use the active pressure. But when it's stopped restraint, we need to use the at rest pressure instead. I have prepared an example to show how easy it is to design a retaining wall in as deep retain. In this example, this is a wall 16 feet high. In this example, I have specified an intermediate support at a support height of 8 feet. So we have a top support and we have an intermediate support. If the retaining wall is supported on piles, just click on this checkbox and then the program supports this, this condition supported on piles. But in this case, we're going to use it without piles because that's the usual case in basement walls. So in this case, I have specified a toe of 4 feet and a heel of 4 feet as well. Even when the stem is 16 feet, the backfill is only 13 feet, meaning that these two feet are free and uh, can be exposed to wind Regarding the base fixity, the wall can be either fixed at the bottom or pin at the bottom, and the resulting design is completely different. If it's pin at the bottom, the bending moment is zero at this point. If it's fixed, then the footing will be exposed to a bending moment as well. In this case, we are assuming that it's a fixed base. We are using a backfill with a density of 120 p PCF and we are using the addressed lateral pressure, as discussed before. The internal friction angle of this material is 28 degrees, and the water table is two feet counted from the bottom of the footing. We are specifying a surcharge. 
no concentrated loads. We have a wind at 30 PSF pressure applied at the, at the top of, of the backfield. And the program shows the pressure diagrams in this view. This represents the surcharge, which is a uniform pressure lateral. This is the backfield pressure, maximum at the bottom, zero at the top. This small triangle represents the water table. And this is the seismic pressure, maximum at the top, minimum at the bottom. Here we can see the resulting forces for the stability analysis. And here we have the stability safety ratios. Overturning failure is not an issue in uh, restrained retaining walls, because for obvious reasons, the wall cannot overturn it. The sliding failure can be a problem. In this example, the sliding safety factor is 1.31 and the minimum should be 1.50 so we have a sliding problem in basement walls it's common practice that the bottom slab on grade restrains the lateral movement of the wall in the program we can specify that if we have the design criteria conditions the first checkbox that says wall is restrained against sliding if that's the case we just check that box OK, and then the sliding problem disappears. Now the wall is restrained at the bottom against sliding. If we go to the materials tab, we can specify here the material properties for the stem, for the footing, and for the bedding soil. Here we can specify the allowable bedding pressure for the underlying soil, the friction coefficient be between the footing and the underlying soil, internal friction angle, and then the depth at which the passive pressure should be neglected. In this case, it's two feet, meaning that the, the top portion of this triangle is not shown there because we are neglecting completely this portion. We are ignoring the effect of this, uh, the top of the triangle. We go to the stem tab. Here we can see the pressures that affect the design of the stem. It's similar to the stability analysis, but in this case, all the pressures go up to the bottom of the footing. In the stem design, they go up to the top of the footing. In, in addition, this is a combination for uh, factor loads. In the stability analysis, we use the service load combinations. At the bottom of the page, we can see the bending moment diagram and the shear diagram that the program generates for, uh, for the retaining wall. As we can see here, the maximum bending moment occurs at the bottom of the wall. So we have a negative moment here and a negative moment at, this, at the intermediate support as well. The blue area represents the capacity, negative and positive, and in this case the blue represents the shear strength of the wall. If we go to the footing tab, we can see the pressures that uh, define the design of the toe, the bearing pressure acting upward in this cantilever portion of the footing, and here we have the design ratios in flexure and in shear, and the controlling long load combinations. And here we can see the forces used to design the hill, the design ratios, and uh, the controlling load combinations. We go to the reinforcement tab. We have uh, multiple controls to define the rebars and the spacing for the stem, for the footing, the toe, and the heel, and for the shear key, if any. We go to the construction tab. We can see uh, section view and elevation view of the retaining wall showing the rebars that we just designed numerically we can see here in at a glance a uh, summary of the results in in one screen and here we can see immediately what is failing and what what is passing for example in this case we can see a problem here in the minimum steel area ratio for the hill so we can see here exactly where to pay attention to correct this deficiency. We go to the condensed tab. We can see a more detailed set of calculations grouped by uh, topic and showing the controlling load combinations for each topic. We go to the detail tab. We can see a more set of uh, detailed calculations step by step with exposed formulas and reference to the ACI code. So we can uh, check immediately all the calculations and uh, every number that the program uses. In summary, restrained retaining walls are structures
commonly used in practice. There are differences with the design of cantilever retaining walls. In particular, the lateral pressure due to the backfill should be based on the addressed load condition. In cantilever walls, the lateral soil pressures are based on the active condition. Cantilever walls are subject to overturning and sliding problems. In restrained retaining walls, the overturning is prevented by the supports, and the sliding is also normally prevented by assuming that the slab on grade restrains the lateral movement of the wall at the base. As you can see, it's very easy to design restrained retaining walls in as deep written. I have published more videos explaining how to use the program in detail, and also videos with uh, solved examples that you can follow. In this case, the purpose of the video is to show the engineering background behind the software. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notification in the future for similar videos. Thank you very much for your attention.